Let's go ahead and get started. Again, this is how to choose the best SEO provider for your practice. We'll be covering the top 10 questions to ask when hiring a dental SEO provider. So when it comes to SEO, it's really difficult to know who you can trust. Um, but deciding who to hire as your trusted dental search engine optimization provider can be difficult. And that's simply because SEO, you know, it's technical, it's an unfamiliar space. Um, and then companies can claim false or misleading information to make themselves sound be it better. You know, that's not unique to SEO. Most companies do this, but um, it's more difficult to know how to tell them apart because SEO is so technical. So not knowing the right questions to ask or what to look for in a company, in the company's answers can help, could lead you to make the wrong decision. So here are the key questions to ask when shopping for an SEO provider. The first one is, can you guarantee that we will rank number one for a major search term? So this is actually a trick question. Um, and that's because no one can guarantee number one rankings on Google. Absolutely no one. Um, if a salesperson says that they can, um, if they're probably spam or actually probably out of this country. There's a lot of uh, companies that pose as uh, American companies and will tell you that they can do this. and they'll probably find a black hat way of doing it. Um, and the reason why people know and no one can really rank, um, guarantee number one rankings is because no one knows the exact algorithm, how it will change and what penalties will come out down the road. Um, this means that SEO, that while SEO companies know the best practices to help you rank higher, they know what we refer to as white hat pra best practices, um, which are you know, tactics that we implement that are pretty safe and in online with what Google is looking for, um, then, uh, you know, they can help you rank higher, but um, no one can actually guarantee placement, especially not within a specific time period. Um, there are companies out there that claim to be Google certified in SEO. That is not a thing that doesn't exist. Um, the only thing that all Google offers is Google Partner Certification for AdWords, which is their pay-per-click program, and certification in analytics. So if someone says that they're Google Partner, that's that's a real thing. Um, they're probably certified in analytics and are an expert in reading Google Analytics um, or AdWords as well. Okay, the next question is, um, asking how long the company has been doing SEO and is it specific to my industry? So you're going to want to look for companies who have dental industry expertise. So uh, they're already familiar with what works best and what doesn't. And, you know, SEO has best practices across the board, regardless of what industry you're in. But really where this comes into play is um, in terms of keyword targeting, um, for auditing and targeting specific keywords, they're going to be more familiar with brand specific or industry specific keywords that people may be looking for. Um, and they'll know which ones are, they'll have a sense for what's most valuable to dental practices. So they'll know which keywords are ultimately going to bring in the best revenue and the best patients. Um, that's just something that a generic SEO company that doesn't specialize in industry just can't know because they don't have the experience in it. Um, so really, an SEO with experience in your exact industry will naturally have more well-rounded and comprehensive knowledge to bring to your specific SEO strategy. Um, the next question is, can you share the experience of other clients? So really what this is referring to are case studies, right? So a reputable SEO company will have uh, client case studies and testimonials, among other stats, to prove their results. So you'll want to treat shopping for an SEO provi provider similar to anything else. Look at reviews, testimonials, case studies, you know. Uh, if you're, you'll probably spend a lot of time, you know, if you wear makeup and you're probably gonna spend some time looking at like foundation reviews, um, then, you, you know, you would treat this the same way. You want to make sure that whatever you're choosing matches you so that you're going to want to get other people's opinions as well. Um, if people can't share the case studies or testimonials, then it's probably a red flag. And most companies should be able to show you at least three or four testimonials or case studies from happy clients. Um, how will you help me get better rankings? This is a fair question and something that you should definitely ask. Um, you need seriously strong SEO strategy to get good results and every good SEO company will have their own set of set process in place. Um, you may not hear we're going to get you this ex like a backlink that's something that's very controversial in SEO. 
Um, so you may not know specifically what they're doing, but they should have an outline strategy approach and next steps. Um, you, things like, uh, you know, strategies to the overall process is something you're going to want to look for in their answers. So quick win strategies, on-site, off-site strategies, technical updates. So quick wins are typically things that we'll refer to as low-hanging fruit. So they'll probably be refer to like cleaning up some page titles and meta descriptions. Those are typically the easiest to tackle first. So you'll probably hear that. On-site and off-site strategies really just refers to things that you're doing both on and off the website. So page titles and meta descriptions are things that are updated on your website. Off-site strategies will probably refer to things like business listings and optimizing and claiming them. So if you hear any of that, that is uh, that's a good sign. Technical updates will typically refer to any missing pages on your website. That's one of the most um, popular things to tackle first. So, you know, um, when your website is missing a page, you'll get an oops page or a 404 error. So fi fixing those right away is usually something that's included in a technical update. Keyword research, um, this is pretty self-explanatory. They're gonna go out there and figure out which keywords have the most volume. And then you should also hear something about ongoing maintenance and reporting. SEO is something that is a long-term strategy and it requires work. So there's a lot more work up front to just kind of get you on an even playing field with everybody else. And then after that, you know, things change, some more pages may be missing, just it happens. Um, so that means that, you know, um, they'll probably want to keep an eye on that and make sure that nothing's broken There's, or they can add new content to help you with keyword rankings. Um, it is an ongoing strategy. And then you should also hear uh, a reference to reporting. So you should have any good SEO companies probably going to provide a monthly report. So you should uh, at least ask to see how often they would provide a report. All right, how do you plan to create backlinks? The reason why this question is so important is because backlinks are a pretty big indicator or big, pretty big Google uh, ranking factor. Um, and they're also the trickiest to get. They're um, in terms of like on a scale from one to 10 where 10 is hardest, getting backlinks depending on the type of backlink can be you know a seven or up. Um, so it is the more, one of the more difficult things to obtain in SEO. And it's also uh, one of the most important for Google and is can really help you change the direction of your strategy or your performance. So, um, like I said, backlinks are a big part of SEO strategy. All companies will build links to your website in an attempt to improve rankings, but all, not all backlinks are created equal. So the reason why this is important is because a backlink is sort of like Google's um, evidence of a credible relationship between two websites on the internet, right? So between like, say for example, you, and if you're a member of the American Dental Association in any way, then um, you would probably have your website listed on the American, web American Dental Association website, right? And that's likely gonna point a hyperlink back to your website. That is what a backlink is, and really that's a representation of your relationship with the ADA. Um, so really, if you think about it, it's kind of like references when you're looking for a job. Google is checking your references by figuring out who's pointing to your website to see how authoritative they are in general in the industry, how they may be related to you. So, you know, if you're both somehow in the dental industry, that's a connection that Google will make. Uh, so good, high quality and relevant backlinks are difficult to obtain because you have to have an incredibly positive impact, but can have an incredibly positive impact on your rankings. So links from the local chamber of commerce that lets Google know where you are located and that you are a legitimate business in that city. Um, or if you have any speaking engagements when, in universities or any professional organizations, that lets them know that you have that relationship, that you are credible, and that um, any link that comes from those websites to your own is the representation of that um, relationship. So low quality ring of backlinks um, are often easier to get, but they can backfire in the end. That's because particularly in the early, like, 2010s, um, there were a lot of changes to the algorithm concerning backlinks because what used to happen is that people would set up um, 
bunch of sites on the internet, create a bun uh, links from those websites that they own to a website that they're trying to get to rank. And at that point, the algorithm uh, was not as sophisticated and it was quantity over quality. So the more backlinks you had, regardless of where they came from, the better you would rank. So that's why these people would create these, uh, what we refer to now as private blog networks of all these different sites that would then point back to one site and give pass on as much authority as possible because of the quantity of backlinks. Google caught on to that and so they changed up, they quickly changed up their algorithm so that's no longer the case. Um, so anything that comes from private blog networks or what we call link farms, which are websites that look like low quality directories that just have a bunch of links pointing out to other websites that have a lot of other links pointing to other websites, it's just kind of a chain reaction. Um, those are really easy to follow now. Google's algorithm is very sophisticated, so it's very easy to tell when that's happening. And those are what we call spammy links, and those can actually hurt your rankings and uh, penalize you to the point where it either drops your website in rankings or it can get your web, your domain removed from search engine results altogether. Uh, that's the worst case scenario, but I have seen it happen. So that's why backlinks are so um, important in SEO. Um, if someone promises you a large number of links, this may be a red flag because you don't necessarily know where they're coming from. And the best links are all usually come from whatever professional relationships you have built. All right, so what tools will you use for reporting? Um, there are many different tools out there that an SEO will use. There's, uh, you know, always a lot of innovation going around, but there are some that you could look out for that are just, you know, top quality, pretty standard tools that some SEOs will use, or there is an equivalent of it. Um, reporting tools like Google Analytics and Google Search Console are pretty standard. Those are free tools. So regardless of what other tools people are using, that's going to be add, usually added to your website. Um, but they may use other tools to help them with good link building, technical SEO to find any issues, um, and then just general research. Um, some top SEO tools to look out for include SEMrush, Majestic, MozPro, Ahrefs.com. Those are all pretty good tools. So if they're using something like it, or if the company at least recognizes the name and tells you what the comparable tool it is that they're using, then they're, it's probably a safe bet. Um, You'll want to understand what types of information you're going to get from the reporting tools each month. So make sure it's cap and make sure it's capturing analytics and information you'll want to see. Uh, this is pretty standard. So most SEO companies will be uh, capturing some sort of analytics. Otherwise, they're not really going to be able to know how your uh, SEO strategy is performing. All right. Speaking of performance, um, you should always ask how they will be determining success. So look for a company who provides consistent and timely reporting to gauge success. A good SEO company will be transparent and consistent providing you a report. A monthly report is most standard. If you want something more frequent or less often, you know, they should be able to accommodate your request. Um, understand what the reports will include. Some things to look out for are is any search, search traffic information, ranking updates, uh, bounce rate is an indicator. Um, so these are just some of the metrics that you'll want to keep an eye out to see how you're performing. Um, it's also fair to ask what their payment structure is. So you'll want to understand how your uh, payments will look like and to better plan your practice's budget. Most companies will utilize a monthly retainer approach, but others may take a flat fee or pay by hour approach. Um, the monthly retainer I feel is the most popular. Uh, pay by hour, um, I think some companies will do if they have to add on anything special. So if they have to actually create you know, SEO content for you, that's one where that may do that. Or um, if they have to actually reach out to people on your behalf for backlinks, that's definitely an extra add on. Uh, quality SEO companies won't be super cheap, but they shouldn't break the bank either. All right, uh, you should also ask if there is a contract and what happens if you terminate your contract early. Uh, just because you want to understand what you're getting into, right? 
Um, it's not uncommon to have a contract, but you want to understand the terms. And the reason why it's not uncommon to have a contract is because SEO does take a few weeks to months of hard work to first see results, depending on where you're starting out from. And not every site is created equal, even if it looks like a competitor down the street has the exact same type of, you know, information that you do on your website. You don't really, there's no way to know, um, the full scope of their web presence without a full SEO audit. So, you know, people are going to be starting from different places. Um, so because it does take a lot of work to really get going at SEO, it's not uncommon for SEO companies to have a contract because they want to have you around long enough to see any sort of movement, either direction, so they can adjust. Um, and it's also important to understand the agreement before signing anything. So all in all, a strong SEO strategy needs a strong foundation. It takes time to see results. Uh, this, when you're hiring an SEO company, you're going to be in this relationship for at least a few months. So it's important to ask questions, you know, um, try to get as best of an answer as you can, um, and just you know, don't be afraid to come back with uh, to other people and shop around and see what other people are saying and just try to get a general feel for what the answers are. And hopefully this presentation will also guide you on what to look out for. So keep this in mind as well. Uh, just so you guys know, ProSites has two decades of, decades of dental specific SEO experience. Uh, actually, our clients of our most popular SEO package see an 81% increase in the number of keywords they rank on page one for. So, um, while we don't guarantee page one rankings, we'll do what, everything possible to get you there. And if you have any questions about SEO or any of uh, our other products, which you know we also do with website design, pay-per-click, and social media, and even providing marketing ROI dashboard, then please feel free to reach out anytime. Okay, so that concludes the presentation. I'd like to thank everyone for joining today. Again, you will be receiving this recording and presentation in a couple of business days. But until uh, next time, have a great day.